Hello guys, welcome back for another training. This is training number five. Advanced construction. This tutorial pre presented by famous rocket scientist Werner von Kerman himself covers how to design a craft that can orbit Kerman and return safely. Welcome to the third and final tutorial about construction, the advanced construction tutorial. I've had to delay some important work today to fit this in, so pay close attention as I show you how a real rocket scientist makes orbital craft. Go on, go inside the VAB. Vehicle assembly building. In our last tutorial, we built a vessel that could escape the atmosphere, but it didn't have enough oomph uh, to escape for long. This time around we'll cover more advanced rocket design concepts like multiple stages and boosters, as well as the extra parts like RCS and solar panels. You'll want these if you spend more time in a few minutes uh, uh, if you spend more time than a few minutes in orbit. When we've done you'll have a craft capable of ascent to orbit orbital operations and a safe return to Kerbin. And you can test it out uh, in the go for Orbin orbit tutorial, which will teach you how to make use of it all. You'll notice that there are lots more parts available this time. That's because an orbit, an orbit capsule craft is much more complex than the little puddle jumper I showed you how to make last time. However, the main principle uh, are the same, so I hope you remember what I taught you. If you mess up, say uh, somehow manage to delete your whole craft, you can hit Ctrl plus Z to undo your last change. Okay. Again, you only have one part available, so go ahead and select it. If you select the wrong part, click on it in the main view to pick it up and either drop it back over the part tool toolbox or press delete and then try again. So this one. Just like last time, select the parachute and place it. Uh, it. Okay. And again, like last time, adjust the parachute parameters by right clicking on the part you just placed. When the chute minimum pressure is 0 0.75 and your safety and, and your satisfied uh, click next. So this one. Zero five. Next. We're now going to construct an upper stage. This upper stage will finish placing the pod in orbit and once there, provide RCS, steering thrusters, and electricity for the pod. It will also provide all man maneuvering capability in orbit, including the re entry burn. It's going to consist of a decoupler, we don't want to carry it home. An RCS a fuel tank, a liquid fuel tank, four RCS thrusters, four solar panels, four batteries, and an efficient upper stage engine. That's quite the shopping list, isn't it? So let me know when you're ready to proceed. Okay. Here we go. Uh, the decoupler. Decoupler. This one. Oh. Hello. Hmm. First, we'll add. Ah, okay. Add a stack decoupler below the pod to let us discard the part we don't want to bring back with us. Grab a decoupler from the toolbox and attach it to the bottom of the pod, uh, paying close attention so that its little red arrow, uh, as we discussed before, points up uh, to make sure that the decoupler is oriented uh, the right way. If the arrow are, arrows are pointing down, that's not good. Detach it from the pod, then use uh, yeah. this one pointing up, this little arrow, okay. Next, next we'll add the RCS tank. RCS stands for Reaction Control System, and this fuel will help us with the fine maneuvers. Go to tanks uh, category and add another decoupler, okay. Uh, this one, RCS, this one. So, 
one is here to be here. How many one? Your craft is not going to need all the monopropellant in the tank to to save some weight. Right click it, okay, and move the slider down to uh, 96 units. 96, okay, to lose some weight. Uh, RCS is generally less efficient, but is good for small velocity changes in any direction and can be used to rotate the craft as well as move it. We'll be adding multiple liquid fuel tanks in this stage to get the, the right amount for the upper stage engine. We need an extra tank to offset the weight of the RCS. Uh, so add a tiny rocket propellant tank and then add a minimum one a uh, medium one uh, below it okay so a small one for this one and a medium one to get it lastly for the main part of this upper stage we'll add an engine the terrier engine produces almost no thrust at sea level air pressure but is a highly efficient in space this makes it a good choice for an upper stage since the engine will not be activated until until the rocket has reached conditions where this kind of engine works well space okay if you select the wrong engine you can always throw it away yeah uh engine uh which one the terrier and how do you see the difference uh Okay. Next, nicely done. That's a pretty well assembled upper stage. If do uh, if I do so uh, say so myself, I'll get uh, you to orbit. It'll get you to orbit if you put enough rocket under it. While we have this reasonable, simple vessel here, uh, let's explore one of the other useful tools we have available to make sure that your ship fly, uh, fly, yeah, flies uh, controllably. Some parts need to be placed carefully around a point inside the ship called the center of mass. This CUM, center of mass, is a spot where the mass uh, on one side is balanced by the mass on the other side. Thrust uh, applied through the center of mass will cause the ship to move without unwanted un unwanted rotation. While thrust properly applied around the center of mass will cause the ship to rotate uh, without uh, moving. This makes the center of mass such a useful and important thing that we added a tool so the assembly building can show it. To you with a marker, let's uh, have a look at how that indicator works here. Click on the center of mass indicator toggle, and we'll have a uh, have a play. Here's a picture of it with the indicator highlighted. So this one here, center of mass overlay looks centered. Okay, next. Okay, let's adjust the fuel levels in some of the tanks and see. How that affects the center of mass. Right click on each of the fuel tanks and drag the fuel and uh, oxidizer propellant levels down to zero. Don't touch the monopropellant levels as they won't be burned. By, okay. As you are doing this, you will see the CUM uh, center of mass move. During flight, the vessel's center of mass will move in the same way as it burns its fuel until the, uh, the tanks are empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. If this is empty and this is empty, center of mass is here. Okay. Uh, on each of the fuel tanks. Okay. This one. Ah, this one goes down. Okay. This one goes down and this one goes up because yeah. Okay. okay. Um uh, and what do I do now? This is the monopropellant yeah. Okay. Oh 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 Hello Right click zero 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 and zero okay. 
Uh, okay, now uh, go ahead and refill the tanks and we can proceed to add some of the uh, accessories to our upper stage. They'll transform it from merely something to get uh, that gets us uh, into orbit into something that helps us once we're there. Okay. Fill it again. Now that you know where the center of mass is when the stage is full and when it's empty, we have the information we need to place RCS thrusters. RCS thrusters are found in the command center and control category. Move the spaceship without rotating it is called translocation. Uh, translocation. This is a useful kind of maneuver for several reasons, including docking and uh, to other crafts. Okay. In order for translation, uh, with RCS is uh, uh, to avoid unwanted rotation. We need to balance the thrusters around the center of mass, so the net sum of forces is balanced right on this natural pivot point. For two equal sets of thrusters, each set should be uh, equidistant from the center of mass, and for a single set, what we're doing here, they should be right around the center of mass itself. What makes this complicated is that the center of mass changes during flight, as you sh just saw. So you need to place the thrusters at a compromising point between the wet. Yeah, okay. Note that we in car uh, career mode games, RCS thrusters don't become available until fairly, fairly late. Ah, okay. In the meantime, the reaction uh, wheel cap capability. Uh, built into your command pod will probably be enough for turning in space. Two reaction wheels will not allow you two reaction wheels will not allow you to uh, translate. Okay, okay. Let's turn on angle snap to make aligning the thrusters part easier. Uh, do that by click on uh, the on the toggle snap icon in the lower left or press the C uh, toggle snap. Lower left. Ah, toggles. Okay. If you don't get the placement uh, quite right, you can also use the offset gizmo to fine tune their position. Make sure you turn angle snap off before using the offset. You will want you will want a fine adjust for that. And it will snap turn on. With snap turned on, the adjustments are anything but fine. Click the offset mode icon in the upper left of the main editor window, then click on the RCS part. Drag one of the axis indicators to move it. If you want to reset this adjustment, hit space. When done, go back to place mode. When you're all done, turn the center of mass indicator off. Oh, yeah, right. Center of mass indicate okay. Um this one needs to be off. Uh where do we find batteries? Laser? No. Ah. Let's turn it like that. Like that. Um how many do we need? Four? How do you find your okay. space? No. If you want to get the place quite right, you can also use the offset gizmo to fine tune their position. Make sure you turn angle snap off before using the offset. Offset. Which one is this? Offset. To 
do I want to adjust that to the main editor window? Ah, two place to move to rotate people, two place to move. Okay, now ah, got it. So we want this a little bit out. Yeah, yeah, okay. Good enough. This will go, this will go. Uh, space center of mass. Uh, go away. And we can go to place. Okay, so fine tune. The placement is here. This one. Okay. Let me set it back. Okay, next. Uh, lots of things on a craft. Use a uh, electric charge. In order to keep your batteries uh, topped up, you will need a way of generating power. Now, some engines generate electricity while they are running, but you don't want to keep your engine running in orbit. Your orbits would get all kinds of messed up and you'll run out of propellant. Our command pod has some batteries built into it, but to be safe, you can add more batteries and you can add solar panels uh, or other electricity generating items we're going to be do both okay switch to the electrical category now and ensure we have angle snap turned on so this is turned on okay um set it to times four symmetric we'll use our part rotation skills to adjust the panels before placing them Okay, grab the solar panel, hold it over the lower end of the fuel tank, the lower end of the fuel tank, okay, and press Q to rotate it 90 degrees, then click to place, okay, uh, solar panel, electricity, solar panel, okay, this one, uh, Q rotated, okay, and the lower part, I think that's okay. Go ahead, place that for batteries. Uh, for batteries. Um, like that. And excellent work. You've built a nice starter up stage, which will do well for some orbital exploration. Now we need to work on getting it up to orbit. And for that, we'll build up our lower stage. In comparison to the upper stage, it's quite simple. Just a couple of tanks and an engine uh that won't be enough alone however so we'll add some boosters too okay add another decoupler on the bottom of the terrier decoupler up here decoupler decoupler point arrow pointed up okay down we'll need this during our descent to the Discard the empty parts of the vessel below. Oh, and notice how uh, when you add the coupler and the fairing is placed around the engine. Yeah. This will get uh, get this jettison automatically when we stage the decoupler. Yeah. Okay. So this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay. Next. Now we need to add the fuel tanks for our lower stage. Add two of the medium rocket propellant tanks to the bottom of the stack. One, oh. One and two. Okay, get it there. For our lower stage, we need an engine that is a, a sustainer. That's an engine that burns from liftoff until we, well, over uh, after the boosters separate. Let's get scientific for a second. Rocket engine performance is measured by specific impulse, and the ESP of an engine changes as the amount of atmospheric pressure around it changes. Just as the upper stage needed an engine that is good at stage, will need uh, boosters uh, which are powerful at the higher air pressure of the low altitude of the launch pad, and to help carry the rocket through the transition. From launch to upper stage, it will need a sustainer engine 
which usually sits between boosters and upper stage engines from a performance perspective, have a wide range in between the two. Uh, so add the big engine you see here, the L, uh, the swivel, to the bottom of the tank as our sustainer. Okay. Uh, this one, the swivel. And now we have a thousand seven hundred meter per second. That should be enough to get us. No, that's not enough. Wait. Uh, at its default thrust level, the swivel is too powerful. For the rocket we're created and uh, for the ascent profile we're going to teach you in the go for orbit tutorial. So we'll need to lower the, uh, its thrust level. It, it isn't, this isn't as good a solution as picking a smaller lighter engine with the thrust level we want. But well, there are only so many options. Uh, right click the swivel and lower its thrust diameter to 60. Uh, five. It will then only produce 65% of its full thrust potential, but it will also run longer because it's only burning 65% as much fuel. Okay. Go down, right click, uh, thrust limit 65%. Five. Gimbal. Nice, you now have the core of your rocket completed. But as I said before, we'll also be adding boosters to help the sustainer engine get the rocket up and running. We'll add two boosters uh, symmetrical so that we keep our craft balanced and to make sure we don't lug uh, the useful, useless dry mass of the boosters around after they burn out. We'll attach them using decouplers. This time, however, we'll use radi radical, ra radial decouplers so the boosters can sit beside our lo lower stage core instead of under it. Uh, that way, the sustainer and boosters can fire at the same time. Select the decoupler and add it uh, symmetry times two near the bottom of the lowest tank on the lower stage. Decouplers, decouplers, this one. Uh, symmetrical. White and like that. Okay. Uh, next, more boosters is some uh, something you often hear about the PSC, and now it's time to add some more. Add a pair of uh, hammer to the decoupler so we have that extra kick early on. Uh, this one, this hammer. Uh, symmetrical, okay. Whoa. How do you do that? Oh. No, sorry. I want it like this. How do you... Okay. Next, unlike uh, liquid fuel engines, where you can adjust the throttle during flight once you lift light an uh, SRB, it burns at constant br uh, thrust till it's out of fuel. We can, however, we can, however, use the throttle limiter as we did on the swivel to set that constant thrust before we roll out to the launch pad. Right click on one of the SRBs and change its thrust limiter to 50. <coughs> Do note that changes uh, a tweakable valuable, a value, value on one part that's been placed using symmetry will have that same change applied to its symmetry counterpart. Okay. So right click, thruster 50%. 50 and next. Right now, the SRBs have flat pancake tops. Yeah, which is simply not a good look. Oh, and bad aerodynamical. Okay, let's fix that by adding a pair of uh, nose cones. Nose cones can be found in the aerodynamic uh, category, and you can add a pair of them using symmetry times two. Um, Symmetry times 
two box. While we are on that tab in the toolbox, let's add some fins too. Fins come in various sizes and styles, and as we learned earlier, uh, will help stabilize your craft. Since the, uh, these fins are control surfaces, they also add some extra control authority when low in the atmosphere, where the air is thick enough for them to have an eff a helpful effect. Add the winglet symmetry times four near the bottom of the lowest fuel tank the, in the lowest stage and make sure they don't intersect the decoupler and the SRV. If they do overlap those parts any flight will be interesting but <laughs> but expe okay. uh, especially short uh, times four and we will be adding uh, times four is this time four no oh Eh? Something like that? Something like that. No? Oh, the tank just is good. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Um, next. Excellent. We've now got all the components on our basic orbital rocket, but let's run it through a few extra things before we call it a day. Firstly, we should review the staging stack, uh, stack to check uh, the order of action and part displayed here, there. It's luckily I've highlighted this for you because the SRBs are set to fire before the sustainer and that's just that just won't do. We won't have enough thrust to get off the pad that way. Move the swivel stage icon down into the same stage as the SRBs. These are the SRBs. This is the stage. This is the engine. This one needs to be in yeah, in here. So this stage is these two, then the decoupler lo loses that, them, then decouples that. Okay. Uh, note that the automatically created stages sequ sequence would work if we did not want to long burn sustainer to ignite at the same time as the high thrust boost but since we do we had to adjust it manually okay finally we pick up the pod and rotate it uh, 90 degrees the pod this will rotate the ship not just in the VAB but also set its orientation when we go to the launch pad so that our desired flight heading of east it will be a better uh, steering the pitch up and down axle rather than your left and right. By default, parts in the VIB are ori oriented so that they are aligned north. So this is aligned north. Okay. Then, oh. Okay. Uh, go up. Take this. Then uh, press A. Like that. Oh. Okay. This one is okay now. Next, we, we also make every effort to ensure our brave crew survives, and hopefully you will take the same stance in your space program. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way, of course, but it's the thought that counts. Uh, with that in mind, let's set up an abort action group for your craft for use in case of emergency. Uh, note that in career mode, you'll have to upgrade the VAB or SPH in order to access our action group. Click on the turquoise action groups button on the left of the toolbar. Uh, toolbar is uh, part of a cluster of three buttons. Action, action, action. Okay. Next. Action groups let you assign the function of one or more parts 
a single specific key. There are some default action groups and some custom ones activated by the keyboard numbers. Because of the order of these keys on standard boards, the action groups are numbered 1 through 9 and then 0. Uh, to set up an action group, click on the desired action key from the menu, then click on the part you want to activate. The action always assigned to that group appeared in the group action column, and the actions that can be assigned from the selected part appear in the selection column. To add and remove items, you simply click on them to move them left or right between columns. To clear all action group selection from a part, click reset in the selection column. We're going to set up the abort action group. It's triggered by pressing backspace or by clicking the big red abort button in flight. Uh, first click on the abort button in the action group column. Action group column. Abort. Great, now click on the decoupler right below the pod and add it decouple action to the group. This one. Decoupler, decoupler, add it to the group, okay? Then click on each liquid engine in turn and assign their shutdown function to the group. So we have an engine here. Shut down engine. Okay. Oops. Uh, we have an engine here. Shut down engine. Okay. Um, hammer solid fuel. Liquid fuel. Wait a Then click on each liquid. Liquid. It's not. Okay. Um, finally, click. On one of the radial decouplers, the radial decoupler, yeah, and add the decoupler, assign the decoupler, yeah, and then, okay. Now, when you trigger the abort action in flight, the engine will shut down, the capsule will separate from the rest of the ship, and it should be safe to land by itself. Remember to deploy your parachute once it's safe, however. Um, this may require staging a number of times since the stage counter won't advance by itself when parts decouple before they are staged. Okay, so stage, 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 and it will keep going. Okay? And there you are. Our, your orbital, ro orbital, orbital rocket is ready to fly. It's been a long lesson, and thanks for hanging in there, in which we have covered lots of different advanced techniques. Um, for rocket construction. Give the new ship a name and save it. That's always good practice. Then I recommend you try flying it in the Gopher orbit in the world. Name it the third rocket we built. Okay, and save it, save it, and done. The okay, that was uh, training number five. Thanks for watching guys and see you next time.